Hi, my name is John Guttinger. And I'm Foster Lipke. We're here today to talk to you about the Cisco Secure Firewall Application Detector Portal at appid.cisco.com. Before we dive into the portal, first we need to understand what exactly Application Identification, or AppID, is. AppID is the ability to look at traffic as it flows across the network and use behavior and heuristics to determine what application a given network flow is. This is extremely powerful. If you know what the application of flow is, you can block it, allow it, or even divert it to a specific set of security controls, giving you a useful toolkit to define your network security posture. In the Cisco Secure Firewall product line, this is called Application Visibility Control, or AVC. AVC is extremely useful, however, to really use it to its fullest extent, you need to know what applications are available to you, how they are categorized, what tags they might have, and when they are introduced and updated within the software. This is where the Cisco Secure Firewall Application Detectors Portal, or the AppID Portal, really comes in to help. The AppID Portal is designed to help you find new detectors, find information about those detectors, and even request new detectors or support on existing detectors. So let's walk through a couple of use cases using the AppID portal. Now, if we want to search for applications, we'd come to the search bar and use that. So let's talk a little bit about that. If I want to look for maybe the Cisco Duo application, I might type Duo, which will do a wildcard search against the application name, description, etc. Now, if I add the tag Cisco here, it will actually show more results because that query is doing an or like query. So it's saying has Cisco or Duo in the name or description here. So we can see that that gives a bit more results. Now, if we wanted to do something very specific, say now that we found the application and we want to look for just Duo Security, now that we know the name, we can just search that, add it in, and we'll have just a single result there. So now if I wanted to share this result with somebody, I would go up and click the link, copy that, and then just to demonstrate, I'll open this in a new tab, and you'll see that if I could send this some, to somebody, they would then have the exact same search that I have. So it makes it easy to kind of search and find uh, specific applications that you're looking for, and also send the links to other people to be uh, to, to, to share that out. And if we want to filter down on something other than just wildcard search against the application name and description, we can also search on things such as the risk, the business relevancy, the tags, and the categories. And this will kind of change the search functionality when you search between things that are a different category. So for example, if I select very low, that's going to show me 1,407 very low uh, risk applications. But if I wanted to know of those low risk applications, how many are very high business relevancy? So if I click on that, we'll see that the result is actually 197. So the way that the search is working is, is an and-like query. So we're saying risk very low and business relevance very high. Now if I add another high to business relevancy, now we're saying show me applications where the risk is very low, the business relevancy is high or very high. Both of those, right? So we see the number here kind of went up, and we can see that we have both results here down on the left where we have high and very high, but everything is very low risk application. So that's how you can kind of combine your filters. Now, if we wanted to add even further, say, what are Cisco applications that are business relevant high or very high and also risk very low? So we have three different AND queries, and this in here is a OR query between the two that are of the same category. So that's how you can kind of narrow your search and it lets you get very granular with how you're searching for your applications. Besides searching for just applications, you can also search against the release notes and things like uh, column vulnerability exposure references, uh, CVE IDs. So for this specific example, I have the one of the CVEs associated with Log4j. If we search on that, what we'll notice is there's no application detectors to display, which makes sense. We don't have application detectors for vulnerabilities. We have snort coverage and snort rules for that. And so what we'll see here is that in the release notes for VDB 350 and 351, we have a reference to that CVE. And so the help here explains that clicking on the link will navigate you to the docs. Hovering over them will show you the release notes date for each of those. So if we look at VDB 350, the first reference that we have to this, and we go to that page, it should automatically scroll you down to where that's found on the page and highlight that for you. So we can see that for this CVE, here's all the snort reference IDs that we added, and this is just the mapping, right? So the, the VDB itself doesn't provide the snort rules. Those come in other packages. The VDB package will actually add a mapping for the CV IDs to the Snort IPS rules. And so that's what we're actually referring to here. Uh, and so now you know that in the product, if you wanted to cross-reference rules with certain CVEs, when was the first time that you were able to do that? So you can also just have a direct link to the release notes if you want to go browse the release notes by clicking on the release notes tab. 
once you're here, you can search and change between different VDBs that are available. For at this point in time, you can see we can search anything from 343 through 353 in the VDB version. So if I change this to 350, it'll give me the release notes for 350. So some of the things that we might care about in this uh, typically would be your change log. Uh, so if we come down and look at this, we can see that there weren't a lot of changes in 350. Uh, we did add a total of uh, 101 references. Now, if I want to change and just kind of compare and see what happened in 351, right? Same thing. We didn't add much. We only added 11 references. 352, we have 90, but references changes. But we actually do have web application detectors that were updated and removed. So it makes it very easy for you to kind of change between the versions to see what was added and which versions are more significant and what changes were actually made in them. And also has a list of all the web application detectors in that were added, modified, or updated, and it'll tell you here uh, what happened in that exact release. And then clicking on it will actually take you to a filter for that specific app ID in the application itself. In addition to the release notes, we also have some resources here, such as the VDB software download. So if you want to download a specific VDB or just go grab the latest one or check the release notes from that path or just you know, get ready, take a look at the history of all the uh, VDBs that we have, that link will take you directly there to those downloads. The App ID portal has a number of useful links to quickly link you to relevant documentation. In the documentation section, we have links for both the Cisco Application Detection Configuration Guide, which is actually part of the Firepower Management Configuration Guide, as well as a direct link to the open source Open App ID Configuration Guide, which is on snort.org. So you may find yourself asking, what do I do when I need an application detector that just doesn't exist? I've looked through the whole portal, and I simply can't find the detector I need. It's pretty simple. Cisco can often create one for you. In the past, you used to have to open a TAC case and request a new application detector. However, now you can do this directly through the portal by clicking on the New Application Request under the Support tab. When you click on this, it provides you with a form that requests all of the information needed for Cisco to start working on creating that net new application detector. The best part is, these go directly to the team that can create them, to avoid slowing the process down through communicating through a TAC engineer middleman. Another useful option in the support section is the ability to request application support. If I request application support, this is going to take me to a page that has a link to directly open a TAC case with the correct TAC engineer. Additionally, it gives me the information that I need to collect prior to opening that case to ensure that my case is solved very quickly rather than as having to go back and forth with the TAC engineer. The last thing we want to talk to you about today is the resource section. This is really just a set of links that are going to be useful to you based upon the fact that you visited this portal. It'll have more information about the secure firewall and some of the ancillary resources like Talos and DevNet. If you've made it this far, I want to thank you for watching. And if you have any feedback, please make sure that you click the feedback link in the top right of the portal. If you found this video helpful, please drop us a like. And last, please subscribe to the Cisco Secure Firewall YouTube channel to stay up to date with new Cisco Secure Firewall features, releases, and information. Thanks for watching.